So you got the verdict from the Abu people. What do they think? They think that this is a messiah and they believe that this uh, budget is absolutely fantastic for them. Uh, um, uh, Latif has been speaking to some of them, and basically what they're saying, those of them who spoke in, uh, in the local language, uh, basically said that this is good news, and then they related to mismanagement of taxes that have been taken in the past. They believe that m taxes that they had paid in the past uh, was really not worth it. And so uh, even though uh, the Ecuador administration promised that they, they promised that they would cut taxes, they did not expect an immediate uh, move as they're seeing now. So that's an, a very interesting one. Very soon, we'll be subjecting what happened today in Parliament to some analysis. In the studio with me is George Osei Bimpe, his country director for Send Ghana and also a tax expert. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to have you in the studio. Also here is Kennedy Abraqua. Kennedy Abraqua is fellow of the Institute of Energy and Climate Change. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. Okay, so before we start our analysis, why don't we take a summary of what was, was presented today? A budget of two loaves, uh, of two loaves, uh, five loaves and two fishes to feed over 25 million people. Uh, one of preferential options for the poor and one of prioritization. That is exactly how the finance minister describes this budget that he presented. Here is a summary provided by he himself, and then when we return, we'll subject everything to some analysis. Watch this. Mr. Speaker, President Akufuasu's budget, five loaves and two fishes, has tackled the five order, structural order. pillars of revenue, has tackled the five structural pillars of revenue, expenditure, earmarked funds, labor, and our debt. Budgetary allocations have been made from tax revenue, ABFA, and the realignment of the statutory funds to fund these priority projects. And we have done this through priorita prioritization of expenditures and planned improvement and efficiencies in government spending. Mr. Speaker, in addition to funding these significant number of programs, we have allocated over 700 million for CAPEX, seven times more than was allocated last year. We have funded NHIS and given free SHS. We have provided immense tax reliefs, including restoration of teachers and nursing training allowances. We have provided, we have, uh, provided tax reliefs. We have provided tax reliefs for the private sector, including our friends in Abuso Kind and all other socioeconomic Order. classes. We have reduced. Order. We have reduced levies on petroleum products. We, Order. we have we have reduced levies on petroleum products. We have reduced levies on petroleum products. We have re Members, order. So, Mr. Speaker, even with these limited resources, we have fully funded NHIS. We have given free SHS. We have, we have, we have. Um, we have, we have provided tax relief for the private sector and all other socioeconomic classes. We have reduced levies on petroleum products. We have reduced electricity levies. We have provided a stimulus for the private sector in industry, services, and agriculture. We have brought down the deficit from 8.7% to 6.5%. But that is not all, Mr. Speaker. For will the, will the parable of the of, of the five loaves and two fishes oh, we still have. But that is not all, Mr. Speaker. 
But as for the parable I have shared with you, we still have 12 basketfuls of fish and loaves yet to deliver to sow for the future for growth and jobs. Our aim, Mr. Speaker, is to restore hope and steer the country onto a sustainable and inclusive growth path. A country that is re-energized to redefine and reorient itself to confront the challenges ahead. A country in charge of its own destiny, a country where the private sector is well equipped to invest in the economy and be the catalyst of growth, a country where our youth have access to the requisite education which will expand their horizon and give them the opportunity to dream and dream big and express their creativity, talents and ability. A country where each and every citizen is proud to be Ghanaian and to call. and to call this country home. Mr. Speaker. Well, if you didn't listen to the presentation at all, that should give you an idea of what they said they have done with the five loaves and two fishes, of course, to feed 25 million, beyond 25 million, actually, all, all of us. So let's come back to the studio and have a conversation on this. Um, I've already introduced you. So what are your general uh, uh, impressions about today? How it went, the details, just a, a general overview. What would you say? Well, thank you very much. I, I think that um, we are coming from a context where we have not been physically, uh, physically uh, disciplined. And um, if I listen to the minister, I see an attempt to instill some sense of discipline um, in the system and, I mean, in the, in the financial, public financial management uh, system. And I would have expect, I'm, I'm a bit surprised and I'm a bit skeptical. I would have expected that our effort would have been geared towards a more fiscal uh, consolidation. And okay. so um, given the, the jubilation that is coming, I mean, the clip that, uh, the, 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 the video that we just watched. From was so kind. From, from was so kind and the jubilation that is coming with it, it still it tells you that people are still expectant of so many things. But I, for, for me, we have listened to budgets all the time, and they all come with good news um, or, 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 one, or one form or the other. The ability to be disciplined, mm. to stick to the policy uh, content that the budget is providing is more important. But okay. um, I, I see a sense or an attempt to begin to embark on uh, what you call to see that the production sector grows, and, right. and that is quite refreshing that the okay. government is taking that steps. I think we can go into the details, but right. there are some areas that still require some clarity okay. in terms I'll of government. I'll come to the areas. Uh, I'll come to the mm -hmm. areas. Let me, let me engage um, Mr. Abraka on this, about your general, what your general impressions will be. Some people have said that it lacked detail, the detail that the president promised all of us in his State of the Nation address was lacking. What are your own general impressions? Yes, uh, I think I would agree in that direction because some of them you would want to know how they are going to do it. Right. Yes, or what plans they would actually um, uh, put, okay, that will do A, will do B to reach C. Those were missing. Although in some areas, like for the taxation, they were quite clear on them that mm. they will take this out, they will do that. And for me, I think uh, there were quite some good uh, uh, sides to the budget, uh, I have to be honest. I mean, if you compare it to some previous budgets that have been read, you see that um, this one kind of is a little, I would say, business friendly. Okay. You, you get the point. And so that is my general impression, although there are a lot of details that we need to actually get. Mm. Well, let's get to the details mm. then and talk mm. about the tax cut. That was what, yeah. uh, what you were referring to, um, uh, Mr. Pimpe, mm -hmm. that uh, They've removed a lot of taxes. Mm. These are things that they promised us, really. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. would you say it's, it's it's some some have said that look, you promised a lot of things. Now you're taking away some of the monies that would have helped you deliver on the things that you promised. How do you intend <coughs> to fund all of those things that you promised people, especially for ESHS? Let's talk about the tax cuts from your perspective. Yes, I mean uh, it was a campaign promise, but. 
so for those who voted for uh, the government or the party because of the campaign promises, they will be happy. So I'm not surprised that, for example, Abuso Khan are in, you know, are in jubilation mode. Right. But if you just oppose that to what the commitments are, and you, give, you, you evaluate the extent to which they are, I mean, how they are projecting uh, you know, revenues to come from, in terms of, for example, um, saying that they are going to digitize, they are going to formalize the economy. These are processes that take much longer time, okay. even though they have given themselves up to the end of the year. But the question is that, at what point in the year do you expect to accomplish this? And what are the other policy measures that will allow you to rope everybody in when you are talking about formalization of the economy? In, that, in other words, expanding the tax net. Right. Uh -huh. So how th that la the, the, the clarity is not there yet. And I am not so sure if we will be able to finish that process. Because, for, for example, the national identification uh, program has been on the table for far too long. Mm. Of course, the vice president has said they will complete it this year. He uh, actually said that yeah. work has commenced, that they are conducting stakeholder uh, consultations. Yeah. To, Th to those to are processes that take much longer time. Okay. I, I would have expected that we concentrated on all those structural issues to address the systemic uh, you know, problems in the economy before we begin to roll out, uh, if you like, the freebies. And so I didn't expect, okay. I, I didn't expect uh, this, this much of tax much, cuts. Yes, because, but some of the taxes are also not really a uh, big issue. They are just, um, some, of, some even may not even exist. For example, oh, really? the, 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 the one on the energy, the, the national energy light. Level. Yeah, a, there's nothing, not there's nothing, like, yeah. there's nothing like that. The street light, there's a consolidated one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, are you going to take it from the consolidated one? How is the computation going to be done? I mean, the energy expert is here mm -hmm. to to help us on that. But I am not clear on that, for example. And so, it may even reduce it. But the impact on household, the critical mass of of our population who are very very poor, who happen to be living in compound houses where we do not have a system to apportion mm. uh, you know the power in a, in a way that they will be able to even they, they may even qualify for the subsidies that government is projecting to be providing those things those ones if we do not address them and you say that you are going to give subsidy it may end up in you know in the pocket of those who are, are, are not supposed to benefit from interventions mm. like that so like i'm saying it is good, but if you do not address the systemic issues, the structural issues, and you go and give some of these things, you may find yourself fulfilling the campaign promise, but the, 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 major, the major problem will still be there. The major problem will still be there. Yeah. Um, let me come to you, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Bakwa, and get into the taxes, that, the taxes that concern energy or that are within yeah. the energy sector. Uh, we'll take it from there. And then what we, 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 when you're done with that, we get a bit more into generally the what they want to do about energy. Let's, okay. So let's deal with the energy or the taxes in the energy mm. sector. Okay. Um, if you look at the taxes in the energy sector, it says that it will abolish the excise uh, duty on yeah. petroleum. Yeah. And you see, the controversy or I would say the promise has actually been that the energy sector levy will be scrapped. Be scrapped yeah. yes. And our attempt was made to actually consolidate this um, energy sector levy. But you see, the stabilization, um, the, sorry, the special petroleum tax mm -hmm. and the excise duty tax are actually ones, even though it looks like it's been consolidated, are taken outside of the energy um, uh, sector levy, mm -hmm. you see. So in reality, the energy sector levy was not really touched. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it was not really touched. Okay. You see, it was. What, what he said about that was that they will have to come back to Parliament and look at amending the Energy uh, Levy Act. So they want to amend it. So isn't it too early to say that it was. Uh, no, but then he said that they were going to cut the, how do I call it, national electrification levy from yeah. 5 to 3%. Right. So that means he, he gave some figures. Yeah. And then if you look at, um, let's say, for instance, the projected um, revenues from the energy sector levy um, in 2000 and, uh, from January um, 2016 to December mm -hmm. it's about 3.7 uh, billion yeah. okay now the composition of the national education uh, levy is just about eight percent of that figure yeah. very very small and then you are saying that you are going to reduce it from five to three percent very very insignificant okay. you see so it's like what is going to happen is that 
for me, I do not expect um, households to be too much happy with uh, this particular, because what is going to happen is that it's, they are not going to have much relief. But where I come from, IECP, we have actually held a view that we think that it is a good thing that they don't touch it at all. That they don't touch the energy levels? Yes. Okay. The reasons are that, look at the debt that is there. It's about uh, 2.4 billion we had, mm. okay, dollars. And so one thing you have to also notice is that the levy, it's not only going for debt. Mm. The debt aspect is just one. There are other uh, parts of the energy sector levy, you see. So if you look at it, in fact, it's just a small part of it which is going to be used for mm. the, the, uh, the debt, you see. And then if you just, all things being equal, if you just decide to um, say, you know, do some calculations or compute the dollar to the city, you are having about over 11 billion. Yeah. That is going to take us over six, seven years to pay this, more than to pay the, the, the debt, you see. So it will be better to keep the levy as it is in the interim, and then maybe as we go on, then you can make revisions as we start to pay off some of the debt. Okay. And then the, 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 the fiscal space begins to open, and then mm. there's like relief. You see the point. Okay. And so that is why we say that it is good that it's been maintained. Maybe the subsequent budget, some good amendments can be done, but as it is, it's a smart way around it by reducing the excise uh, duty on petroleum and then that of the special tax on petroleum. I see. So isn't it a matter then of integrity if, we, if you, um, you told people that hmm. you would do this and then you come and you're unable to do that? How then, from, from where you sit, how then is the government or is the finance ministry going to be able to um, convince Ghanaians that, uh, listen, this is actually what we said we would do, but looking at the, the, the reality of the situation, we can't really do it. I think it's, it's got to do with the fact that they have to come out and, and, and tell people that, look, this is the reality on the ground, or this is the situation on the ground, because we owe too much. You see, now look at what is happening. You realize that we kind of saying that we are going back to doom so. That is the phenomena that uh, we, we, we kind of going back to. And it's not actually a matter of installed capacity. No, because we have much installed capacity. See, so it's a, pro it's a problem of the production. You see where the point is coming yeah. from. So if it's a problem of the production, then it's like I would put it's, it in. It's irrelevant for you to begin to look at the energy levy. Yes, because uh, you need money to buy crude and other things mm. to, to power. And this is the situation you are already owing. Okay. You see, so if you cut down on the levy, what people should know that what is going to happen is then we are going to sleep in more darkness. Hmm. That's the situation and that's the simple truth. So we need the money to buy the crude and service the debt and other things so that in the interim, that is what is going to happen. It, okay. it will be painstaking, but let's say some few, uh, you know, maybe some <laughs> years to come. <laughs> some years to come. Well, actually, he mentions that 127, about 127 megawatts will be added. Uh, that's what they're looking, they're looking at doing, and then they will deal with the outstanding issues with the uh, Millennium, Millennium um, the Challenge Compact, Compact yeah. exactly. Um, from, from your institute, do you think that this will cause us further problems? Because already we seem to be experiencing uh, doom so uh, a bit of it actually so how do you reconcile all what they're saying and what really well, they're saying? you see the, the compact i think if i uh, my memory serves me right has a different intention especially for the uh, privatization of the electricity sector right uh, um, that is privatizing ecg and, and and other things so that is a bit more of a different issue compared to the installed capacity when you are installing capacity you're only adding to the current uh, the existence what we have and that's what I'm trying to say. For me, um, we don't really need too much capacity as it stands, even though it's good, because we our projected demand for every year is about 10 to 11 percent. You see, and looking at um, the consumption from the, the households, or I'll say from the consumer side, mm -hmm. it's not too much. It's not see, too much. Exactly. exactly. Now, I would like for you to have a look at this quote uh, that we put there. 241 million cities has been budgeted. Uh, for social benefits to assist lifeline electricity consumers in the country. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. At least it will bring some relief to those who are, I would say, are on the low line. You see what is happening. So uh, that is a very good thing. But the problem is that one will say that um, I, I, I am just a bit skeptical. Um, the reason is that, um, you see, looking at the, the, the fisc I would say fiscal tightness, uh, it is very, very tight especially looking at the, 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 the debt to GDP ratio exactly. and all that. Exactly. Uh, so, and then so how would this then impact in the general 
uh, economy and the general on, on the budget in general how government will you see you, you want to look at the the the, 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 the magnitude of, of the thing sometimes it is it will be very small you see but it's, at least it's a good start right. you understand the point huh? it will not have a very huge um, um, how do I call it impact immediately okay. it will take time okay we will need more than that you, you get the point. All right. Yes. Let me bring you in on this, Mr. Bifin. Yeah. Now, yeah, um, I know that, b before you go on, I know mm. that the Fen Ghana uh, embarked on a project to take people's uh, input into the budget, yeah. or take people's expectations, not just expectations, mm. but the areas that they deemed important for government to concentrate on. Mm. How do you reconcile what you found with what we're getting, especially if we, since we're talking about the energy sector? In the energy sector. Well, one, one, and, and I'm, I'm very happy that you have talked about the the lifeline, uh, the, the lifeline, mm. and the social benefit category. Right. We, what we, we were asking was to, for government to be clear, and to have a strategy, a strategy to target the beneficiaries. Okay. Oftentimes, in the budget, you may find that such amount has been earmarked to provide subsidy. So, you know, if you don't want to call it that, any you know other name. Mm. But it will, like I said earlier, it will not get to the beneficiaries. Why do we so so? Because many of these people who are renting single rooms mm -hmm. are doing so in compound houses. So we haven't talked about the issue of metering. How do you get separate metering so that it qualifies you for the lifeline? Because okay. if the entire house exceeds the life, uh, lifeline, mm -hmm. and because you are many in the house, within a matter of two days, you will see the lifeline. And that mm. you'll be paying as if you are using air conditioners and all those right. things in that house. That's the true. house is taken as an entity. And so if you want to then get to the poor, then you have to first address the issue of metering. How do you provide every household? When we say household, we mean um, um, a group that live from one bow or one or a family mm. head, one mm. family. So mm. if the family is living in one bedroom, mm -hmm. how do you provide them with uh, uh, one meter? I didn't hear, for example, about a uh, policy on, you know, addressing access to meters. Right. That will allow for this, bene you know, benefit to reach the yeah. people. Yeah. And so you may say it, and it will stay in the budget because people will not be, mm. uh, you know, they will not qualify to, to, to assess, assess it. it. So and in that case, what, what, what should be done? That government or the finance ministry for us should now begin to go back and look at the metering system. I think that is the, that's the best way to go. You know, I started talking about the structural problems, mm. systemic problems, mm. and they cut across all the sectors of the economy. Okay. In, the, uh, in, the, in the electricity su supply chain, distribution has been a major problem. ECG, uh, we, people will have to struggle to even get one meter. Sometimes mm. meters are stolen. How are we addressing it such that every household will have one meter? Right. If you go by the government mantra, one household, one meter, something, something <laughs> no, like that. That was, so that was a previous question, but even, they didn't even say that. It was just a so, part of the central uh -huh. region. It was not uh -huh. like a So, so that when you provide thing. a subsidy, then you target the subsidy. We are very good at providing social interventions, but mm. we do not reflect on how those interventions can reach the intended beneficiaries. And that is the same problem that I see here. And I'm afraid that it is there. It's a good and laudable um, intervention that mm. government is providing. But because the way the system works uh, is, is not so conducive for the operationalization of this intervention, the end beneficiaries will not get anything from we'll not it. Get anything Very from few. It. Very few people will benefit from yeah, it. Yes. So it does this sink in with the kind of responses that you got from the project, or you did not, you've not really put no, we, no, the the, the in terms of policies to to achieve fiscal consolidation, to ensure some reasonable uh, level of macroeconomic stability. Yes, but as this thing has just come out, we are, we are actually, I came out of a meeting where we are actually scrutinizing um, the budget. Uh, we, are, we are scrutinizing the budget. So in the not um, a very few days time, we will come out with our analysis to see whether government has been responsive to okay. uh, citizens' input. But the macro um, level um, you know, indicators that I have read, mm. the projection that government is making, certainly points to um, to a sense of government at least paying attention or being in tune with the reality. But the nitty gritties, the, nitty the social gritty. protection programs, what has, what has to happen in education, agriculture, mm. um, production, all those things are things that 
we will be uh, looking, looking at, at in okay. subsequent days. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a quick one that I would like for you to address. The ECG. He says that uh, there will be restructuring uh, the, 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 the power companies, you know, and putting clustering some of them, for instance, under various institutions. So, for instance, the ECG will be under VRA, and so they've got, uh, they, they, they're looking at a more structured way of how these energy or power-related institutions operate. I don't know if you listen uh, uh, I, to that bit. I'm not too and sure what? of um, the ECG bit, and it's mm. maybe what I, okay. I'm, mm. I'm sure of is the trying to segregate the thermals from the uh, hydro exactly. and all yes. those put yes. in. That is very good. That is very good. I mean, it, it allows you to streamline the activities and then you are able to focus. I can say that with, with Ghana's distribution, with Ghana's distribution sector, uh, um, you see, um, it, it's okay. For instance, we have ECG taking care of the southern mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. We have NEDCO taking care of the northern sector. We have the free zones ones uh, mm -hmm. as well. So at three distributors is okay. Uh, for, for that particular structure. But the problem has actually got to do with the generation side, you see. And so, for me, if we're able to concentrate, like he's saying, such that, okay, mm. let us put all thermal under one umbrella, let us put hydro under one umbrella, mm. that is good. It allows us to have more focus. It's, it's all right, and it's, it's, it's in good direction. I if, and if I may, uh, I think that the, the government is not going to depart from the previous government in terms of how ECG is going to be managed, mm -hmm. and apparently they are not abandoning the uh, mil mil millennium, uh, millennium uh, compact. Uh, yeah, yes. compact. Millennium they are not abandoning, uh. and it tells you. I mean, whether we like it or not, ECG needs some form of um, uh, what do you call it? No, not, not that uh, management. A revolution in the way yes. they manage that company or that entity, and and to have uh, this arrangement is not for privatization, as they call it. It is for about you know, ensuring that management of a state asset is done in a more professional way so that we increase efficiency. There's so much waste in the way you ECG. About 28%. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's some, some, the, the, there ought to be some mechanism to address the waste in the system, the right. way they go about their duty, business as usual, not, not being responsive, electricity theft, sometimes conniving with customers, all those issues need to be addressed. And I think the minister, ha having hinted that they are going to take up the issue with the Millennium Compact, yeah. is, is signaling that, yes, that, ide that um, idea of the previous government has not been abandoned. I think that it is important that this uh, uh, is going to be continued because we need to reform ECG. And of course, we need to reform the entire power sector as they seek to do yeah. in terms of whether they will float um, some shares to allow for Pri uh, you know the, pri the, the private sector to participate, inject capital into it, and then ensure the that their money, yeah, uh, diversify risk from the side of government, and ensure that whoever invests in it will also make sure that they get return. In that case, you inject efficiency, reduce waste, and then um, probably doing so will be a thing of the past. Because the challenge of doing so, whether in previous government or the current government, is not necessarily at this level about capacity. Okay. It's about recurrent expenditure that we need to, you know, you know, buy fuel, uh, you know, configure existing uh, plant and so on and so forth. Those, those are things that need to be addressed. Okay. Well, we we will go back to Parliament and take a, a short, very short uh, uh, clip from the uh, finance minister about uh, one the one district one factory uh, mantra, something that okay. we've heard over and over okay. and over again. But like I said, one of the things that people have said is that this budget lacks the kind of detail that we wanted. So, for instance, if you talk about one district, one factory, how are we going to fund it? If we talk about education, how are we going to fund it? If we talk about NHIS and increasing access, etc., and, you know, introducing and bringing back mater maternity uh, care, etc., what, how, and where are you going to get the money from? Those are things that most people have said we do not get from the budget. Let's listen to the finance minister on one district, one factory, and one return. Uh, we'll try and put it all together in the discussion about education, health, etc., and how we did not get the details we wanted to get about how it's going to be uh, implemented. Industrializing Ghana from the ground up. One district, one factory. One district, one factory implementation, of which will commence this year, will be closely intertwined 
of our National Industrialization Revitalization Program is designed as a comprehensive program for rural industrialization, driven by the private sector and involving the setting up of at least one medium to large scale factory in each of the administrative districts of our country. It is aimed at creating massive youth employment, especially in rural and peri-urban communities, add value to the natural resources of each district, ensure even and special spread of industries to stimulate economic growth in all parts of the country, enhance the production of local substitutes for imported goods and promote exports and increase foreign exchange earnings. It has the potential, Mr. Speaker, of transforming the industrial landscape of Ghana and will contribute significantly to the socio-economic development agenda of the country. We estimate that over 350,000 direct and indirect jobs will be created from all parts of the country as a result of the implementation of this program. The mandate of the ministry is to provide equitable access and quality education to all Ghanaians, to make them functional citizens in order to contribute to the growth and development of the country. Over the medium term, government aims to shift the structure and content of Ghana's education system away from merely passing examinations to building character, nurturing values, and raising literate, confident, and engaged citizens who can think critically. To overcome this challenge, government will also redefine basic education to include secondary education, covering technical, vocational, and agricultural education. As part of this initiative, basic education certificate examinations will be used as a tool for placement of students into second cycle schools and not for certification. To improve the quality and relevance of education and further make the products of our school systems competitive, Government will review the basic level curriculum to focus on the four hours of reading, writing, arithmetic, and recreation to include life skills and creative skills. Government intends to ensure that all our children have these basic skills when they exit the primary school system. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, as part of our commitment to improve access to education at all levels, Government will implement the comprehensive free public senior high school program, starting with the 2017-2018 academic year. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, adequate provision have been made for the funding of this monumental social intervention program, which is set to begin in September 2017 from the ABVA, from the ABFA and other domestic revenue sources. Mr. Speaker, we will initiate discussions with all stakeholders interested in the performance and excellence of their senior high schools in their communities. Parents, school alumni, religious organizations, the diaspora, and they'll be encouraged to establish a funding mechanism to support high schools of their choice. This will reinforce community involvement in governance and improve the quality of education in our senior high schools. It is time we all participated in ensuring that Ghana education regains its status of excellence. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, you did not get the details that the, prom uh, the president promised. So let me throw it to you now. He's spoken about the one district, one factory, um, and about education as well. But that's just two of a whole lot of other issues, health, etc. like I said. Mm. What, he, he mentions um, the annual budget funding amount mm. and other domestic uh, sources mm. as where they're going to get money to fund all of these things. Yeah. What, what do you make of it? Okay. So unless, I'm not in his mind. So unless he plans Well, we can't to, be in his mind. Yeah. That's why he needs to put so, on the paper yeah. and so, put it in the TV. And that is where he, he leaves us in doubt. Mm. Uh -huh. But unless he is planning to, to go to parliament tomorrow <laughs> to change the law, the petroleum management law, mm. because per the law, the government has to prioritize four key sectors mm. to spend the annual budget uh, amount. Okay. 
I am not sure, and I don't want to believe that government is saying they are going to prioritize only free HSS mm. and free SHS, free uh, SHS and okay. uh, the ABF. Okay. Uh, and I do not want to believe so. So if my assumption is then correct, the question is, what constitutes the other domestic sources that he talks about? Mm. Maybe why private, is it that in the budget? Why is it that in the budget, this cannot be made uh, 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 clear? Mm. Because if we cannot have clarity in the budget in terms of what constitutes the domestic uh, revenue source mm. to fund such a laudable idea, then the question that people ask is where, where is the money coming from? So it's as relevant as it was mm. um, yesterday. Right. So that, that leaves, leaves, leaves us. Then I would also expect that government will be strategic mm -hmm. to come up with a targeting mechanism to roll out this program to go by what the Constitution says as making it progressively, uh, progressively free. free. Well, that's what the NDC did, and they criticized it and said, look, we will make it completely free. So yes, you can make it completely free. But for example, if I were doing this, what could somebody consider that one of the rough or loosely defined criteria um, of, of defining children with you know, poor background okay. is the fact that they are not able to afford private schools. Mm. So would you want to say that all children who attended public schools, public JHS, or mm -hmm. I don't know how they call yes, it. Yes, JHS. JHS. All those are qualified. So that we would leave, we, we would then make the assumption that all those who attend private schools mm -hmm. have the means. Because if you look at it, in the other, other, uh, other, uh, other private school, they pay far more in excess of what they are supposed to pay okay. at the secondary school level. Right. So if you can afford that, then we can assume that you can afford this as well. I so raised this argument be, before, and it didn't really be, fly. That would be a smart <laughs> way. That, no, that's because the reality Because people that, then said that that's discrimination, because the same people who are paying... It is positive discrimination. Yeah, yeah, because, well, they say that the same people who are paying mm. for the taxes, the mm -hmm. same people who are, who, whose taxes you are taking mm -hmm. to fund this project mm -hmm. are the same people you're going to leave out. Which taxes because then you are say now we, if you are not talking about ABFA? Mm -hmm. and, and look, as a country, we, are, we have problem with inequality. Since the 1990s, we have succeeded in reducing poverty. But we have only succeeded in increasing inequality. Uh, inequality. Mm -hmm. And so there ought to be some pragmatic steps to address inequality. How do you address in inequality from the fundamental uh, point of view? Okay. So it your is point to is provide that an opportunity to mm. people so that they have uh, 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 the opportunity to take part in the economic space. Okay. How do you do that? Education, 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 and probably skills development. And so if you want but to exactly, address that's exactly what they're saying. They, it's just how to pay for it. It have been good. That's in contention. I, Let me bring <laughs> you in. Yeah, I think um, I, I agree with the argument uh, in some parts. It's fine. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of looking at the cost-benefit analysis. Mm. You see, uh, so I think they have probably would have considered that. For instance, you are saying that uh, then they should allow those uh, who are poor to go inside. But mm. then uh, someone also argued, like you said, that I am also paying taxes, so I need to... To enjoy and the exactly. point of inequality, you know that it will be very difficult to do away with inequality. Only you can um, equity, you, equity works yes. for inequality. Yeah, but you know? but I think that um, if we could make just some uh, intelligent guesses, for instance, I would just say that, for instance, um, with the issue with the one district, one factory, mm -hmm. even though they were not very setting as to where to get the money, probably like you just said, well, the, the right way. I'm thinking they are it's in the PP. Yeah. Yes, PPP. you see, uh -huh, private PPP. public partnership. Partnership, exactly. See, the reason why that would make much more sense is mm -hmm. that it is self-producing, it is self-generating. And so when people bring in their money to invest and you pro uh, provide the enabling environment for them, they can get their money back. Right. See, but the issue with the SHS is different. You are putting in money free and mm -hmm. then it's not self-generating. You're not getting anything back, exactly. You get the point. So that would be very difficult to, 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 to say to provide funding for, you see, aha. Uh -huh. And then, like you said, the domestic revenues are always saying you, you are not very clear because already, if you look at uh, uh, Ghana, the, the revenue that we get uh, the, due to the uh, tax net mm -hmm. is just from a few people. People, exactly. So, so, so you, see the point that, you see the point I'm making is coming back. You see the ability to pay. If government had the means, I think everything would have been free. Electricity would have been free. Mm. Water would have been free. Everything else would have been free. And that's what the citizens aspire 
you know, for. for. Okay. But the reality, as we sit down here, and as we read or we listen to the minister, we the, even the ministry from the minority and what they're saying, but touch briefly on agri um, and infrastructure. Um, they talk about planting the planting for food, the initiative of planting for food, etc., and how that will in itself will create jobs and of course uh, boost our food security, etc. I don't know if you've got any views on that to share uh, yourself, Mr. Yeah, part particularly with the agri. Um, my my views are that I'm not too comfortable with the all planting. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, planting for all. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, why not? Um, because you see, you don't need all of us to get into agriculture to provide jobs. Mm. It is good. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You see, the reason is that you already have in Ghana over 60 percent of the population already in agriculture. Okay. You see the point. So if you say planting for all, then I say you are going to add more people to the to the already 60 percent. What I believe that should be done is that if we can rather improve on the technology and the quality of farming. Mm. You see, because it is... But that's part of the plan, I mean, yeah, it's part really. Of it's part of the plan, mechanization yeah. and the mo modernization, modernization of, of the agricultural plan. sector. Yes, Maybe that would be a better focus for okay, me. Okay, so they should focus more on yes. that and, and then leave leave the out planting the... for all. That is what I believe. Well, why not? If you're not <laughs> interested, someone might be no, interested. I take, I take a different view to yeah. that. I exactly. think it's a very good initiative. Mm. If, we, if you read the economic history of Ghana, it tells you how uh, the, the, the state that, um, I mean, how positive it was mm -hmm. when um, the, the Champong government introduced the operation Feed Yourself. Yes, and I think this is drawing, this policy is drawing inspiration from that policy. Yeah. It is good, one, because we are having uh, the reality, it, it may be 60%, but the reality is that we also have teeming, um, you know, youthful population who are not getting anything to do. And for example, if government is going to implement the one district, one factory, you would want to look at agro processing. You need a lot of people to produce raw materials all, all year round so that we don't have much, uh, you know. Uh, so, but I think that the, the, thing, the, 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 the issues that we need to address is that how, how do we provide infrastructure to support agriculture mm. so that we don't have the case um, whereby everybody goes into agriculture, the next day we have supply glut. Mm. And, and, and for that reason, it becomes a burden on people to even dispose of their nice. so, uh, produce, uh, farm produce. Right. And then that we, we have a strong linkage between agriculture and industry and make sure that you anchor the one, one, one uh, district one okay. factory, factory policy on that. So then there's a, an uptake of raw materials right from the, uh, right at the district level. So they, 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 we, I think it is good, and I, I'm very hopeful that they will be looking at strategies of uh, this and, you know, making sure that there's that integration, be it vertical or horizontal integration. Okay. But the, the issue, and I mean, there are some people who have no business working in Accra looking for jobs. Yeah, I see. When we can, well, uh, no, no, that, that's the reality. That's okay. When they can put themselves into productive, okay. uh, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> okay, like I said, we, we've Activities. just got up, uh, uh, less than 10 minutes to wrap up, but let's hear from the opposition. I mean, sometimes people say that they are so predictable that when people are in opposition, they, 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 they are the same. That what the NDC will say about the NPP's uh, budget today, the NPP would, say, would have said the same uh, with, the, with the budget of the, of the opposition. So really, it's very predictable. But here's what some of the members of the opposition think about this budget. In Parliament, even though they spoke about uh, placards, etc., there were placards all over the place saying that 419 budgets, 419 budget. So they showed us that they think it's a 419 budget. Here's what's in their heads about the budget. Calling us, we get it right too. They are calling it a simple budget. I call it Kasapa budget. Why? Why? Because Kasapa is dead. But the truth in it is, in fa and, and also, it's about 60%. But the, the, the point is that, so this is the outline. The, maybe they'll be able to implement it after all. Do you have doubts that they'll be able to implement the promise that they've said they would? The oh, tax cuts and have, everything? They have already broken the promise. The president himself, when he came, said that they will give all students in JHS free SHS. Well, free or free SHS starting in September. In the minister, no buyer, no. Or say, the minister says that they will give our children only the first years entering school the free SHS. We know, which is 
a big difference. If, if it's a new policy, shouldn't it start from somewhere and get to somewhere? At least these are the foundation stages and it's all beginning. Thank you, my brother. That is what NDC has been saying. That's why NDC says implement the reforms progressively. Today, that's what they have said. They said we will do it progressively. You yourself have said it. One of the issues of interest, the KIA tax, which has been scrapped. Uh, You've been a crime mayor. Yes. Uh, for you, is that a good idea or a bad idea? And you know, what kind of effect do you envisage well, that would but, have on but, the, but, the resources that the assembly so brother, uses? What is, what, what, is, what, what is KIA levy? Where, where does KIA levy exist? There's no KIA levy, KIA levy anywhere. What we have is that we have market tools, which everybody who works and stays in the market pay. So if you are scrapping that, say you are scrapping the market tools. But if you pick something like KIA levy, which does not exist anywhere, to say that KIA, uh, uh, KIA levies have been scrapped, whom are you, I mean? You think that's unfair to the other traders who will still be paying it, those who are not KIAs who will still be paying this? Well, let me give you an analogy, then you, you yourself uh, get it out. When they said they will uh, uh, eliminate the tolls the, or the duty on import uh, duties for um, uh, for spare part delay, did they segregate it? No, it's universal. So when you are going to also going to go into the market, say no more market tolls. But if you segregate and say a car you uh, 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 levy will not be there, what is car you levy? Say market tolls. Then everybody knows that from today when they work in the market, government will support the market to establish there is no uh, tolls. But at least this brief one, do you think, you know, this one that affects only the KIAs, do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it may have adverse impact on the resources that are available to government and the assemblies? And all? Well, look, every time you take away uh, a, 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 an existing tax, you must find money somewhere else to replace it. You understand? So if they, by their plan, say that no more duty for the, for the spare parts, hey, it's good. It's good for me. If I go, if you go and we go to buy spare parts, the prices will come down. You know, more items will be imported into our country. So that is good. But now let's give it also to the other people. Let's not segregate it when it comes to others. You understand? But my question is that where are we going to find all these monies? When they in their political campaign have said that no more borrowing, but today we have heard they will borrow. When they themselves have said that they will not take monies from the uh, international communities, IMF and all that. Today, they said we work with IMF. So which one is which? When you are doing campaign, it's one thing. When you come to the reality, it's another thing. Today, they have vindicated NDC. You know, NDC, John Mahama, has been vindicated. Thank you. Thank you. What we have heard today is uh, just a step uh, forward, but it's not satisfactory. It cannot be satisfactory. You heard the minister say that ABFA and other domestic sources. What are those domestic sources? Because the ABFA clear would not be enough. What we are also picking up from the finance minister's submission is that instead of comprehensive free senior high school education, with the promise of the campaign, which he repeated here, those words, comprehensive, it's turning out that that is not what they are going to implement. The budget highlights which, because in the presentation, he didn't give us any figures, but his communication team has since given us some budget highlights. Those highlights, the figure we are seeing now is 400 million. That is woefully inadequate. 400 million cannot suffice. It cannot satisfy the obligation of free SHS. You need not less than 3.1 billion cities to fund free SHS comprehensively. So, 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 so annually, 3.1 billion cities. So the 400 million we are being told, that is why they say ABFA and other domestic sources, and they do not tell us what those domestic sources are. Mind you, at the same time, the same budget statement, you are talking about reducing allocations to the GET fund that you want to bring an amendment to parliament to the get fund law so that you will deal with those rigidities you know the assault on statutory funds as we have described them so you are going to have limited resources to fund free shs when you carry out that onslaught on uh, on, on on get fund now what is also curious what is also curious is that whilst all of this is going on was you have said in the campaign and continue to say even after you were sworn in that you don't want parents to contribute, you are going to, you are going to fund free SHS and fund it comprehensively. We heard for the first time today a very strange animal which the finance minister is calling education funds that they'll be calling on parents, they'll be calling on alumni, they'll be calling on old boys, old girls and other uh, foundations to contribute to that education fund. We are waiting for the modalities. What does that mean? So if a parent can contribute directly to his child's education at a secondary school level, 
Why are you stopping the parent now? But you are saying that later on the parent should bring that contribution into an education fund. It's a 419 budget. We are waiting for the modalities. That's what the Kujetua Black Kwa, former Deputy Minister of uh, Education, says. Let's wrap up with your comments on this. The, first of all, on the reaction of the minority, which obviously we expect to be mm. against, and then, <laughs> and then the substance of what they're saying, mm. really. I think they both raise very key issues about what is it, what is it you're calling the Kaye levy? He says there's nothing. If you, you want to support people in the market, make it universal. Mm. And Okujato, on the other hand, says, listen, we do not have the details that we want. It, is, it appears you're going back to progressively free SHS, which we were doing already. Mm. Let me start with yeah, you. Yeah, well, in, in first, first of all, they are, I'm not surprised about their uh, reaction. <laughs> they are politicians, and they are in opposition, so we would expect that. But uh, the substance of it, um, which is also true, is that here again, um, what is the purpose and intention of the abolition of Kaye Levy? Mm. Is it about addressing the, the economic situation or circumstances? Mm. I would say then that, that is not enough. Because it's 50 pesos. Yeah, 50 pesos. That, that is not but enough. But it means a lot to them, you know. It may mean a lot, but what will, what, what will take them out of that situation, situation and make sure that they have skills okay. and they, have, they, are, they are doing meaningful job? So that to guarantee their future, mm. they do not become become social liability. For me, we, that is the most sustainable way of taking them out of poverty than to say that you are not going to pay five pesos a day. Okay. That is nothing. Um, that, is nothing. That, that is nothing. That is not able. That is not going to resolve uh, or provide solutions to their, to their social. I mean, to their social and economic okay. problems. Your final words. My my final words are, are that um, yes, government has intention to do so many things. I think that they need to take their time <laughs> and be strategic in prioritizing what ought to be done. If in the, I mean, they have made promises and people are on them, on their neck, to, give, make, to fulfill all those promises, I think that they can also write on the goodwill of the people mm. to explain things and, and then let people understand what we need to do to build a better future than to okay. uh, you know, uh, implement ad hoc policies that will create Continue More to problems, create and you know, compound the structural problems that we have. Okay, thank you very much. Let me come to I you. I think I, I will go back to what happened in Abusoka. One person said that, yeah, we expected them to reduce it, but we, we thought in two years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then it, 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 it plays out something that uh, even though they were expectant, they were patient. Yeah. You understand the point. <laughs> uh -huh. So it, it says it's true. I mean, they have to prioritize and then bring out some of the one at a time, yeah. which is very good. So. I believe that um, even though they, they've said all these things, as to whether they can achieve all, I really do uh, doubt though. But I think they, they will definitely try which ones they can do first. Right. That should rather be better than trying to tackle all the issue mm. at a time. It, okay. it will be very difficult, given especially the, the fiscal tightness of, of, of our current uh, mm. situation. Will that be your final words? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I've been here in the studio with uh, George Osei Binpe. George Osei Binpe is country director for CENT Ghana. And Kennedy Abraqua is a fellow at the Institute of Energy and Climate Change. We've been talking about or having a discussion about uh, the budgets which has just been made. <laughs>